welcome to a review of the DTS Q220 from ZondaHobbies.com. Today we're going to have a look at what's inside the box and then we're going to have a look on clean flight and configure the quad and then we're going to take it out for a test flight to see how it performs. Right so let's have a look at what's in the box. Right, so first off you've got your support card here. I'd recommend that you keep this because it's going to be your way to contact Zonda Hobbies if you have a problem with your quad. Next you've got the warnings and here you've got all the wires so you can connect it by one, cable, by one cable to your receiver. You do have to supply your own receiver for this quad. Right, so lifting the first piece of foam off and it is very well protected in the box. Right, so first off you've got these propellers. These are tri-bladed and Zonda Hobbies say that these are indestructible so we'll be putting that to the test. And you've got counterclockwise and clockwise props. Right so next up we've got these. In here you've got some extra foam, some tubes for an your antennas to go through, a little tool for unscrewing and screwing the bolts on and you've also got a pair of tweezers in there too. Next up you've got your antenna, this is going on your ground station and it is right hand circularly polarised antenna. Right so removing the second piece of foam padding. Right so in here you've got your antenna from the quad that is also right hand circularly polarised and also in here you've got a rubber band and some spare plastic parts here and some screws there. And finally in the packaging you've got the DTS220 quadcopter. Right, so let's talk about the quadcopter. You've got LEDs on the back and front arms for orientation. You've got your battery strap. You have DTS branded 2350KV motors labelled with arrows on what direction they spin. Your right hand circular polarised antenna goes on here. There's an XT60 connector for your 1350 4 cell or 3 cell battery. On the front there's an FPV camera and, uh, and it is able to be angled up and down so you can either fly looking level or on a tilt so you can fly faster and on here there is a here are some grommets so that you can mount a gopro or an action camera on the top here also there is a lot of plastic on the sides however you can take this off if you want it to be much faster zonda hobbies have said that so you can actually take it off to make a much higher performance quad it is good for the durability of the quad to have them on there isn't a used manual included on paper in the quad box, but I'd recommend Zonda Hobbies if you're watching this, make sure you do include one because they are useful to have a paper copy. It is available on the internet though, so you can still access this. Right, so let's talk about what it could be used for in real life scenarios. So you could use it for FPV racing or freestyle, and one other way that you could use it, and I plan to use it in the future, is for capturing aerial video of other planes in the sky using the action cam mount here for my run cam. Right, so now I'm going to assemble the quad and do all the programming on clean flight and put my receiver in. If I do have any problems, I'll show you them now, but otherwise, I'll see you once I've assembled this quad and got all the motors working on clean flight. Right, so now I've got the receiver installed. I've checked it all in clean flight. I've mounted the antenna, tightened the props on after a test hover. Made sure that the FPV frequencies were all set in here. On this quad I am going to run a 1350 mAh 4 cell 40C LiPo battery. The FPV camera is actually mounted on these grommets so it has vibration dampening. One thing that I have noticed is this antenna if it does flip over in a crash this connector here is going to break. So if Zonda Hobbies are, if you're watching this I'd recommend that you change that to make it more strengthened. Right so when we had to put the receiver in we had to open this little case here and then we had to unscrew this bolt this bolt this bolt and this bolt and that lifted this cover off and then you got access to the inside of the quad the circuit board is mounted just there and we managed to get the receiver just back here our receiver only had short antennas so that fitted in there well but otherwise you could mount it up front in here and you can mount your antennas with the poles provided through them the battery straps on through here and then you just tighten it on like that. As you can see here, this frame fully supports a run cam 2 and it will support most GoPros. There is a stand included that would support a GoPro, but this is how I mounted my run cam, as it has this sort of body shape. I used some of the foam included just to stick down there, and that's actually a spare piece for down here, but I used it up here to boost the angle so that when it flies, it flies like that, so it's not looking at the ground. Just like the adjustable FPV camera here. As you can see, it is quite far in front. The front of the props will hit the ground before it, so it will lessen the impact if you do have a crash. 
and there is just enough clearance for the props to spin past the camera. When I powered it on, these LED lights are really bright and they would help with orientation. They are different colours on the back and front. And there is also a backlight, so if you can't tell the colours apart, you can tell that there's a backlight and that means it's a back. I found all the hardware that you needed to unscrew the plate to install the receiver. They were all included and they were really good quality tools. Also there is this multifunctional tool which allows you to unscrew bolts. One of these functions allows you to unscrew the prop nuts and all the others are used for around the quad to take it apart. I have the DX6 from Spectrum and I'm going to bind that to the DTS Q220. I have used this switch here which is switch D. I programmed this switch to go stability mode, horizon and dacro. There's also a switch up here and I programmed this switch to be the second switch. This is for switching modes on the OSD and taking the OSD off on the FPV feed. In here you can insert a micro SD card and there is a little cover here so you can put that over the SD card so it doesn't pop out in flight. You press this little button down here and it flashes to record and that records the FPV feed here with no lines so it goes 720p HD footage. This frame is built for durability it is also built for a beginner pilot, so it is set up for a beginner pilot. But you can tweak all the settings on clean flight and make it really for an experienced pilot. I found that when I was placing the battery here, it was very close to the props and sometimes the actual wire was ca was catching on the props and making a ticking noise. On the bottom of the quad, there is lots of firm padding and in the box there is actually extra firm padding if this starts to fall off and this keeps all the electronics off the ground. Again, there is a hole here which would allow moisture in if you were flying off wet grass. So that would be good if it was covered up so that the wires don't get wet and it could lead to a malfunction of the quad. Right, so my first initial thoughts are the quad is durable and it's built to be durable and for beginner pilots but for experienced pilots if you tweak all the settings. This FPV camera is a good idea to have the SD, micro SD card slot into the side to get HD video off the quad. Also there is space up here to mount an action cam. They do include a mount for a GoPro to go on here, a GoPro style camera to go on here. I like how they sell the quad in 25mW, 200mW and 600mW versions or, um, so that covers a wide range over the world of different countries with different legal limits. On, and some problems that I've discovered upon building this quad is that the battery placement could be better, maybe an in-sunk area where the battery sits in. This connector here, that could be more durable, maybe have a bit of a protector around it, maybe a bit of plastic to go around the edge. You, you could probably 3D print this part and it would just be a little mount so this connector is protected. This connector is going to get knocked around a bit. I found that this is quite hard to get off so this seal could be better and easier to get back on and off. I like how the props and the motors are labelled whether they go anti-clockwise or clockwise. Also Zonda Hobbies are on Facebook so you can message them if you have any problems with your quad and just want a bit of help when you're building. Also if you were going to take the plastic housing off, these ESCs at the bottom, I'd probably rather them be on the top because they are going to get, they are going to be prone to moisture down there unless you put some tape over them or heat shrink. I like how I like how the FPV camera is adjustable and it is vibration dampened. When I was taking it apart to get the receiver in, none of these screws went in the manufacturing process. They were rounded off, so that's good. So none of them were done by a machine and grinded. In the flight video next week, I'll have to have a look at how durable the props are, how this antenna copes, where the moisture gets in here when it's sitting on the ground, and I'll have to check the FPV footage and put my run cam on here for some 1080p footage. You can buy this quadcopter on eBay and there will be a link in the description. So thanks for watching the DTS Q220 unboxing and build. Next week we're going to have a look at how it flies and the FPV video and how the antenna copes and all the things I've just talked about. And then we're going to bring it home and have a look at and have a talk about how it all went. Right, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.